And returning to one of our top stories now, world leaders are in New York for United Nations General Assembly. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is expected in person for the first time since Russia's full-scale invasion. He will try to rally support for more advanced weapons as well as more ammunition. He'll look to his allies like Estonia as a percentage of its GDP. As you can see there, Estonia is one of the top providers for Ukraine. Estonia's president says primary focus for the UNGA is on continued support for Ukraine, as well as arguing for reform on veto rights in the face of Russia's war. And joining us now live is Estonian President Alas Karis. Mr. President, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us this evening. Uh, we know you're addressing the UNGA uh, on Wednesday. What exactly will be your message to leaders in New York and beyond, sir? Well, it's going to be actually two, uh, two messages. One is, of course, uh, the war in Ukraine and all about the war in Ukraine. And actually, the second one is related to the war in Ukraine, which is uh, um, we have to reform the uh, United Nations uh, Security Council because there are veto for some number of countries and especially from Russia. So we can't proceed from here if there is a veto procedure in the Security Council. So you call on that, let's start on that second point then, the, the calling for the need to reform the UN Security Council, I'm guessing in order to remove voting rights from certain countries, in particular aggressor states. How successful do you think you'll be, Mr. President, on that front? I understand we said there, are, there have been several attempts already from, from the beginning of the 90s. And uh, it's not only a veto issue, but uh, um, UN has changed. If you look, at, look back, I mean, the UN, UN started in the uh, in, in 40s, 1940s. There were only 50 something members. Now there are 193. That means the situation has changed. And also, probably we need more members also in uh, United Nations Security Council. So now the question is, who is going to be? That's, a, that's an argument and this is a discussion point. And uh, I, I'm sure questions will be raised and asked about Russia, and I'm sure you'll tell me this. And, and if that is the case, I'm keen to get your thoughts here, Mr. President, on the recent relationship or alliance, if you want to call it that, that we have seen play out in the last week between North Korea and Russia. If there is some sort of arms deal or military agreement between Mr. Putin and Kim Jong-un, what should be the response? Okay, we should very, be very careful, I mean, what's going on, especially with... Uh, these countries like North Korea and, and so forth. I mean, the military presence and military ammunition that these countries have, including nuclear weapons, are, are worrying, of course. So uh, this is also part of the uh, United Nations to make sure that these kinds of conflicts, like now we have in Ukraine, won't happen. And if they happen, I uh, have to find a solution for these conflicts. But if there are uh, veto for some countries, especially a country who is actually Mm, doing these atrocities in a neighboring country, then we do have a problem. Just to remind you that uh, when we had predecessor of United Nations, which was the League of Nations, when Soviet Union at the time attacked uh, our neighbor Finland, uh, Soviet Union was kicked out from the uh, League of Nations. But now there is a Russia who is a member of the uh, United Security Council. So are you saying if there is some sort of deal between both sides that Russia should be kicked out? This question of kicking out, this question is, at this very moment is a question of veto. I mean, that means if there are atrocities or this, let's say that Russia is involved, at least it should be abstained rather than uh, vetoing mm. uh, the declarations or whatever is, is uh, going to be um, there. Yeah, and the veto, it might not have enough votes for that veto. Let's talk about the other points you brought up, Mr. Press, and that's Ukraine and the war in Ukraine. We are expected here from President Zelensky tomorrow. We have learned, CNN has learned from a senior Ukrainian official, that Ukrainian forces have liberated about 300 square kilometers of territory from Russia since the start of this counteroffensive. What is your assessment of the progress so far in what relates to this counteroffensive, Mr. President? As President Zelensky said uh, himself, that this is not a, a movie. That means it lasts only one hour and, and 50 or, or 30 minutes. It's a war. It does last long. And 
Next, my, what I would like to propose is that um, more, more and leaders should go to Ukraine to visit Kiev, and not only Kiev, but go to the front line. We can talk to these people who are actually fighting there. And when you realize that the, the offensive is there, but it just takes much, much longer than one would expect watching TV. Yeah, you are alluding there to some of the criticism uh, about the pace or the, some may say the slow pace of this counteroffensive. It seems at least now there seems to be momentum, Mr. President. But of course, the concern is as winter sets in, the gains perhaps may slow. What does Ukraine need, you think, to keep that momentum on the battlefield? Where are allies going wrong or where are they slow on? I mean, it's war is, as I mentioned, war is a war, and it's uh, difficult to um, speculate what's going to happen next. But we see already today that there is uh, some kind of offense which has been successful. And, uh, and what we have to do is just to keep supporting Ukraine, military, humanitarily, also start to rebuild Ukraine, which, like Estonia is doing, uh, starting to build a kindergarten in Ukraine. That means. If, even if a war ends tomorrow, it still takes thousands of years to rebuild Ukraine, and it does cost money. Mm. Let me ask you this finally. I was reading a fascinating article by an interview, in fact, with the Estonia's outgoing spy chief, and he said if the war were to stop today, it would take Russia between three to five years to restore its military might and capabilities to the level that we need to strike the next neighboring country. This is Colonel Margot Grossberg, uh, Estonia's outgoing spy chief. That is pretty startling, sir. It's, it's important to uh, make sure that after four or five years, there is no idea from, let's say, Russian side to start uh, any kind of war in any, any place in the world, especially if we talk about the neighbors. Because there are so many frozen conflicts already, and uh, we have to stop this war and to uh, end these conflicts as well. The Estonian President, Alla Karis. Mr. President, appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule to speak to us. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.